In today's video, I will be making benzene. To compare with other YouTubers, I will follow the same method, but in a larger scale and see if it works out. Because the reaction requires a high temperature, I need to use a metal reaction vessel. So I can just use an empty paint can, which you can buy for really cheap instead of going through a lot of effort to clean out an old one. An adapter needs to fit and seal into the lid, so the benzene will come out through the adapter and it is then possible to condense it by attaching a condensing column to it. I just mark the size and jam the screwdriver through the lid and then use some scissors to cut out the hole. It doesn't have to be perfect since I'm going to wrap the adapter with teflon tape and I can always use more if it is too big. So that is all for the reaction vessel. Now I can move on to the chemicals, which I only need two of, which are sodium hydroxide and sodium benzoate, which are both pretty easy to get. So I want the chemicals to have as much contact with each other as possible, so I'll mix 200 grams of sodium benzoate with 120 grams of sodium hydroxide and put them in a blender. After it is all blended, it is now a fine powder and the chemicals should be mixed evenly so I can put it into the paint can. After I got most of the powder in, I cleaned off the powder that got into the sides, put the lid on top and shut it with a hammer. So now that the vessel is complete, I simply attach it to a condenser and start heating the underside with a torch. After a while, some vapors start to come over and we can see an orange liquid condensing. We can also see a stream of vapors and some orange liquid flowing into the receiving flask. Since the reaction is going pretty slow, I help it with another torch and put a heat gun against the side of the can. We can see that it has an effect and a lot more vapors start coming over. It also went a little bit crazy, but it's not much of a problem. And after a bit more of that, it started going very slow and not much more came over, so I stopped the reaction. We can see the final yield of the liquid and the beat up paint can. I open it up and see that still a lot of the powder is loose and has not reacted. So it is likely that a bigger scale doesn't work very well because the heat doesn't transfer well into the powder. I read online that you can add calcium oxide or copper as a catalyst to improve the reaction. You can also fill the can with some steel wool, so it conducts more of the heat towards the inside of the can, which seems like a good idea when doing this reaction on a larger scale. So now I will just wash the benzene several times with some water. Then I drain the benzene layer into a flask containing some calcium chloride, which will absorb some of the water. Since I didn't feel like filtering off the calcium chloride, I decided to distill the benzene with the calcium chloride still inside the flask. In this case, because the volume was pretty small, I use a small path distillation to minimize any losses. Distilling it with the calcium chloride likely drives off some of the water from the calcium chloride back into the benzene, but I was gonna dry it a second time anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I bring the liquid to a boil and insulate it with some aluminum foil. After a while, nothing came over anymore, so I remove the aluminum foil and see that all the liquid is gone. I remove and stopper the flask with the benzene and take apart the setup. We can see that all that is left in the flask is some orange stuff mixed with the calcium chloride. So the benzene is still a little bit cloudy, which means there is water present. So I add some molecular sieves to the benzene, which will trap water inside of its structure. After shaking it, we can see that the liquid has instantly turned clear. My final yield of benzene was around 30 milliliters, which is pretty low. So definitely use the improvements I mentioned before to improve the yield. 